No question. That's just a quite. Uh, what about this? Probably. Uh, I'll, yeah. Ah, cheers. Um, so I don't know. If some of you might or might not have seen the blue logo at the bottom of the pamphlets and the things that have been going around in there. I use a scary name. I actually work for Barclays, and I'll tie it up in a bit of a random away story. I'm quite glad I've done last because it completely changes what I want to talk about. But like, I'm the what his name. Richard, you change his talk completely. Um, so three interesting anecdotes before I get into the thick of it. Uh, one, I before I started this job, I worked to open a leather company using 3D printed tools and laser cutters to grow my business. Didn't work. Where to with it today? That failed miserably. And had to get a job. So interesting anecdote there. Second one is that's very similar to my final project at university as a product designer, but for dead people. So dead people for dead people. Dead oh. people. Yeah. So. Um, <laughs> <laughs> as, a, as a tool to um, uh, yeah. <laughs> um, to as a tool to someone to create their life and leave messages to people and token and totems. Um, third one is I think through this lecture I slightly read this brief wrong probably. So very much in the essence of everything we talked about today and why I'm here from Barclays. Um, so another brief is about selling makers to other makers or how I read it is selling what a maker is. It's like it's loose. Um, and why Barclays are doing it. So Eagle Labs, um, forget Barclays for a second. Eagle Labs started as a maker space um, about three or four years ago to reuse old branch space. Because um, again, branches are changing, it's all become digital, they don't even have a space, you don't want to have queues at the door, no one wants to go in there. So Barclays thought uh, through a very Incredible kind of um, leader in the business that will, uh, off the back of the great efforts from the Digital Eagles and the Life Skills programs about teaching kids to code and teaching all people how to use the internet and those kind of things, born out of what we do in this space, how can we empower communities to learn about technology? It was all around empowering them to use laser cutters, 3D printers, coding, and those things. And over three years, um, we have more and more spaces that had maker spaces. And then another part of that business overtook. So the incubation side of businesses and how you can accelerate it and so on and get staff off the ground. That kind of overtook the um, makerspace beginnings. And I brought in about seven, seven months ago to kind of take the reins of all the makerspaces. So we have 17 of these incubators up and down the country, eight of them with makerspaces in to support communities, uh, startups and things like that. But they've lost their way, lost that narrative. And, and it's amazing to hear all of what I heard today. It's completely um, cemented my worries, my fears, what's been going on, and why does a humongous conglomerate bank, usually the scariest people in the world, everyone mocks and hates and things, why would they have spaces like this? And it, the narrative got really lost, and I'm trying to rebuild that um, for different people for different things. So it is a community resource for people to understand technology. It is there for startups to use to help create their um, prototypes and get their products off the ground. It's also there to educate your C-suite of what technology is, what you can do to think about it properly. The core, um, kind of going back to some conversation I had around um, what it means to be a maker, and truly the ethos of Eagle Labs as a whole, regardless of the maker space or not, is to do it in partnership with people. So our reason why we have them in cities is to try and work with people like us, and we have a great relationship with other country, other maker spaces, to show what it means <coughs> to be a maker. And the way I understood this brief was selling makers to people, and it's incredibly hard if you're not in that bubble. And selling what they can do, selling the, um, all the amazing, wondrous things of how they can take something, or a very few parts, and turn these amazing products or prototypes, or, or, or how they uh, educate people. That value is very misunderstood if you're not right in the center of it, or right in the, or, you know, if you're on the periphery, um, outside the room, shall we say, you don't understand it, and that's why the businesses have gone, why do I have maker spaces? And it's been my job to try and convince them otherwise that they are integral to society. They are integral to how people should learn and adopt technology. There's a lot of people still going from the second industrial revolution to the third, let alone this fourth one everyone keeps talking about, the fourth industrial revolution. Um, and when you feel in partnership with other people, with like minded people, we can educate kids how to code and make and build. We can do it for SMEs and startups. Um, but that journey has been very, very hard because they've sometimes seen us as hearing merchants. 
trinket merchants when actually the value we've given to people and help them get off the ground um, has been monumental. We've helped people get funding for their business. We've helped um, one thing in Brighton we've just done, we're helping someone create the moulds and intricate one-off um, castings um, to put statues all over the country. I think there's only I think there's, I think there's 500 statues of women in the country, I think 90% of them are Queen Victoria, something like that. And we're helping her, there's something, something sort of that ratio like that, and she's on a journey to um, change that. And we're, doing, and we're using our techniques and our tools and our knowledge and our partners to help um, do that. But that value to her is immense. That value to her, to, to the community, is immense. But it's the value to business and the wider picture of why we have the space is lost. And I think it touches upon a lot of what we've talked about today, and that value to an economy, to a society. And I think there's a, there's a gap. So selling makers as an idea, regardless of brand or name, how we coin it, um, that value, not monetary, that value it gives to people, doesn't translate into the bigger world to your laps, to your, well it doesn't always, it doesn't always. Um, and I'm hopefully, we'd love to speak, speak with people today, tomorrow, and sit down to figure out how we can do that as a mix of people. How can makers unite in cities and towns as a movement to prove that it is great for business, it is great for economies, it is great for your one man or woman band trying to set up. Um, and they're not just trinket machines, they're not just playing or coding, we're, we're generally adding value to people's lives. Um, there's a few people in the bank who believe that as well. Um, and I think banks are changing, um, what they were to offer is changing, it's not just about money anymore, it is about knowledge, other things. Um, and I guess what should end on is, yeah, I think we're at the start of an incredible journey, there's lots of pockets of these, this space, lots of pockets of people doing the same thing, like America has it, China is doing it on an industrial scale. Um, What's our next? I think we're at the cost of something incredible if we can just start working together a bit better. Um, I have no idea if I answered the brief or not, but there you go. <laughs> Thank you.